You damn it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got the timber ax, finally. Look at this, it is so beautiful. There's wind at my tail right now, so it's kind of kicking this thing out of my hands. We did some adjustments. Our true maiden will follow at the end of this video. But for now, we're gonna fly it right now and just show you how awesome this thing is. We did some adjustments mechanically to get all of our control surfaces lined up straight because we were in up against the wire when we started our flight. Throttle cuts off, elevator up, down, left, right. This is V2, meaning it has an AR-631 instead of the AR-636B. We increased our flap deployment or flap to elevator compensation uh, on takeoff flaps to 30 and landing flaps to 40 with a three second deployment speed. That's more than the manual calls out, but you'll see when we take off. Here we go. Even with all that, and we still have a little bit of roll. Getting that corrected in. Okay, out of the flaps all together. This plane is crazy, folks. Full landing flaps here. So as you can see, the wind is a factor, but a very small factor. And we're flying with full landing flaps right now. This plane is definitely close to a 3D plane. As you can see, tons of up elevator. Gets a little bit wonk when you're upside down. It wants to kind of do that tendency to roll a little bit for me, which I'm not crazy about. I'm gonna show you again. Okay, going into the wind. You have to do a little bit of compensation to get it to fly straight. But that's crosswind too, a little bit. See how it's getting tipped? Now let's do some cornholes. They call it the Timber X for a reason, because it is extreme. Might as well be a 3D plane, folks. But most 3D planes don't have safe. This one does. I'm in safe right now. I got 50% throttle, take off flaps deployed, getting kicked by the wind a little bit, but look at that, just basically flying itself. Okay, so with safe, limited bank left, limited bank right, limited up. You can almost stand on its head, but then limited down. I'm gonna turn around for you. Here's limited down, out of the throttle, and under throttle. See that, how it picks up? They have a throttle to elevator tie. So I'm gonna come out of safe now. I'm gonna try to get this to do a flat spin. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 and safe. Safe can save your tail, but you don't have to save your tail. You can just let it crash like any other plane. As you can see, a little bit of porpoising. We set this plane up with uh, the metal rod. And when I say the metal rod, I mean, there is a metal rod instead of a carbon fiber wing joiner. As you can see, she's quite easy to control though. Now let's do some stole takeoff, full throttle. Yeah, it'll take off really quick. And near unlimited vertical, I'd call that unlimited vertical. It's pretty much unlimited. And you can plop it down in the grass, take off flaps here. We're gonna go over into the shade just a little bit. Watch this, get it on its mains and watch that thing walk. Absolutely no problems there. And even with the heavier wind right now, folks, the thing flies great. We're coming up to our four minute flight timer here. Just about 25% throttle here. Then look at this beautiful landing. Right here, guys, right at our feet. The timber is just a different breed of aircraft. 
If you get the Timber 1.5, which would be the Turbo Timber Evo is the current revision, you've got the top load battery, you've got the Avian ESC, which gives you a thrust reverse if you have enough channels. The NX8 will definitely do that for you. If you have the NX6, you may be limited because there is a seventh channel on it. Uh, but depending on how you turn on and off safe select, if you're using safe select, you may be disappointed. So definitely be thinking about the NX8, even though it's a few bucks more, it's hardly any more and it's gonna give you all the functionality for most of the models that we've done. We've been short by one channel on one plane so far and I'm up to 69 planes mm -hmm. on this radio system. So very, very happy with this. Uh, you can fly a little bit longer. We're gonna do a little bit more flying here, but we're not gonna run it to the dead battery setting like we did on our first flight. Our first flight, we were fortunate enough to be in the calm, but just, you don't have to fly it like you stole it. You can just go around and motorboat around if you want. And by the way, it is not calm. Let's go fly by the windsock so you can see. See the windsock there? It is not mm -hmm. calm. That's a lull in the wind, okay? So if I were to come around again, you'll see it's picked back up again. But at the end of the day, this plane is very fun. It is not probably a beginner aircraft, although you could make it a beginner aircraft if you really, 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 really want it to. I'd highly suggest you don't. I would say get the 1.5 meter version if you insist. But that being said, by the time you buy a transmitter, batteries, chargers, all that stuff, it's gonna be pretty dang expensive. So for a beginner plane, I would highly suggest that you consider something that's more, by design, a beginner plane. This looks like it could be a trainer because people that fly other trainers that are high wing believe that this is gonna be more tame. The shorter wing makes this thing kinda crazy. Now, I'm not saying that means it flies bad, it just means that it's crazy. It's basically a 3D plane, okay? But it's a very capable 3D plane too which means you get into trouble quicker. But then you've got safe, which does not stop you from stalling. Let's demonstrate, okay? So I'm up here in safe, okay? I'm janking the sticks and I'm doing some stupid things and then look at that. There we go, spiral of death, right? So that was with a somewhat experienced pilot. I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but I would say that I'm skilled enough to be able to demonstrate that, so. Um, the reality is, if you're an unskilled pilot, you would have probably been picking up the pieces out of that power pole. Now, if you had the extra, if you had the 1.5 meter wing, you would not have had that same problem. You could have induced it under the right conditions. But generally speaking, the shorter wing, which is true for the Night Timber X as well, makes this plane way more crazy to fly. And it's funny because what people don't think about is just the sheer amount of drag that you get from having that longer wing. 1.5 compared to 1.2 is a big difference. It's like hundreds of millimeters, guys. There's some planes that aren't even that big, the difference. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, you can uh, showboat around with this thing all day, just doing sport flying if you want. But if you're doing this plane and you wanna fly it at night, get the Night Timber X. The reason we review this for you is because it's very popular still, people really like it, and it's a little bit cheaper than if you're gonna go with the Night Timber X. If you know you're not gonna need the lights for Night Timber X, then this plane is a great option, folks. I mean, it's a really, really good option because you're gonna save, I think it's like 50 bucks or something difference. But in my book, I still think for 50 bucks more, buy the nighttime experience at the same time. It's all factory installed. Just want to show you that it'll fly real slow if you want. We did have some wind that was kind of forcing our hand in terms of airspeed to keep wind over the control surfaces. And in our true maiden flight, it was getting dark. It was sunset here, so you can see yep. the factory navigation lights that are on this one. And the little three-wheel landings are super easy on this plane. But if you wanna drag it out like this and walk the dog or whatever, the thing can do no wrong. They're softer tires. And so between the softer tires and the springs, the thing is just incredible for landing. 
Now you may notice that I have, I think I just need to trim the elevator just a hair. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Feels a little bit better now, a little flatter now. But you guys should know this by now, when it's windy, it's, it's a lot harder to get your trim set. So because we have quite a bit of wind, we're not gonna be able to fiddle with it to get it exactly the way I want it. But you see, it just, you, you can basically do no wrong with this thing. Throttle management will get you close to 15 minutes of flight time on a 2200 4S. If you're real tame, you might even be able to get closer to 20, but the thing is you'd be pushing it probably. So just make sure that you have an out. Make sure you have an out. <laughs> like that? <laughs> make sure you have an out. No, that's not an out. <laughs> an out means that you would have a, a landing approach in sight. But my big thing on this plane is that I just, I can't stress this enough. It looks like a beginner plane to a degree, but it is not. It is an extreme plane. It is very um, capable. It does everything that you want it to do, but it does it very snappy. And it is a lot harder to fly this plane than it is to fly the 1.5 meter. The 1.5 meter is an amazing plane. If I was you and I was thinking about this as a beginner, I would take no, I would take, I wouldn't even consider this plane until my third or fourth plane. And that's because I want you to have a good experience. I don't want you to just buy everything that we review. I mean, I'm sure that Horizon wants that. <laughs> I'm sure that all the other companies that we work with want you to do that. But the reality is we want you to have a good experience. And I think they do too, because nobody wants one and dones. It's one of the biggest, biggest problems in the fixed aircraft, the fixed wing hobby. You hear that? Dead sticker landing. We did dead stick landings for you last, last time and now we're doing it again. It's seven minutes, 18 past four. Full landing flaps deployed. Gonna bring it in here. Try to get a nice greasy landing for us if we're lucky enough. <laughs> Not very greasy, but still I'll take it. That was cool looking. I love watching the landing gear splay. Throttle cuts on, flaps are coming out. Guys, this plane is, it's a great plane. I love the way it looks. I like the way it flies. Note that I said I like the way it flies. I didn't say I love the way it flies. Here's why. I'm not a 3D pilot, okay? That's not what gets me up in the morning, okay? Um, I prefer scale flying and I prefer sport flying over 3D flying. Now, I do enjoy 3D flying, don't hear me wrong. But the idea is I haven't devoted myself to becoming a 3D pilot in, in really any manner. Uh, this is kind of the same way that I don't devote myself to being a helicopter pilot predominantly, but I still really enjoy it. And I'm working through the ranks on the helicopters too. So at the end of the day, I like, I like the plane a lot. I like the way it flies, but it is a lot more challenging. And I appreciate the way that the 1.5 meter flies so much that it taints my view of this and the X to a degree. So just keep that in mind. Does this plane fly great? Yes, it does. Am I a great 3D pilot? Probably not. And that's part of the reason why I say that. Um, the, the NX-8 has been wonderful. It's been working perfectly for what we do uh, with the exception of one plane. And to be honest, we were able to get around that by just basically uh, adjusting our setting. We wanted a master gain on the knob and we weren't able to have that and thrust reverse simultaneously whilst displaying safe select. So, you know, just one of those things. But guys, this is one of the biggest reasons why you should like this thing. It's kind of wet this morning on the runway, so the tires are a little bit wet, but these things are squishy and that makes a big difference. I would like them to be twice as squishy and I would like every plane to have squishy tires like this. So they make a world of difference. Also, this thing is capable of receiving floats. They do not come with the plane. If you get the 1.5, I believe you do get the floats with it but just check me on that. I'm not sure. Sometimes they change these packages uh, in the interim. We review them and then like six months later, something changes. So anyway, very happy with the plane. I think it's a great one. You're definitely getting what you expect. After watching that video, the wind is pretty strong. We got 15 to 20 mile an hour gusts and it is still flying okay. So I would say in dead calm, this thing looks a lot better. So stay tuned, watch the video at the end. You'll see some asymmetry because of the flaps coming down, I think at a different rate. 
but either way, the thing just has quite a bit of P factor too. P factor from the torque on the motor when you've got that engage it wants to roll you. So just be aware, plan on it. It's a 3D plane, not a beginner plane. Those are the key points. Great plane, 2200 4S. We'll show you exactly where we have it and the CG and all that good stuff. We'll show that in the unbox build and radio setup, which is gonna come right after the clip showing how we leveled these things to make them all agree at the tips. And then you can watch the unbox build and radio setup and then our maiden will follow at the end if you're still interested. But guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support our channel, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Thanks first of all to our patrons for helping to support us monthly. That is super touching that you guys are doing that still. Um, if you wanna buy planes, that's the easiest way to support us. Uh, if you're overseas and it's not practical, we get it. But at the same time, the Patreon and PayPal is there for you guys if you really wanna support us in that way. Uh, but watching, liking, subscribing, all the usual things, share this with your buddies and let them know that we're out here. If they need help, you got somebody that's new to the hobby, find a plane that you think they might like and show them our video and you'll get them hooked, I hope. So without further ado, stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys. All right, YouTube. So we promised that we would show you the couple of changes we made. First of all, this is where we're flying the battery uh, today. And we're, we're trying to fly it like a 3D plane. So you may want it forward more, uh, but these straps are a real pain. And this is 2200 4S and it is a 50C pack. Okay, so throttle hold is on or throttle cuts on. Okay, we're in our middle expo mode. That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna plug this in. Then we're gonna put this cover on and you do need to flip it over and get it on its feet quick. Okay, once it's on its feet, let everything initiate. You'll see the dance two times if you have safe select turned on. And then as you can see, I centered my trims. We'll include our, the only trim I didn't center was my elevator, okay? So it's 36 plus. And then I have this rudder at minus four, but I centered my ailerons. The reason I did that is because last night I felt like um, the asymmetry of the flaps was causing the plane to veer when I deployed flaps. And when I didn't have flaps deployed, it went straight. Well, that's because I was compensating uh, for the asymmetry in its neutral position, but then when the flaps deploy, then I can't compensate. There's not nearly enough for compensation. There is a way to do a, a flight mode. You can attach your trims so that they're attached based on the flight mode, but then you have to attach your flight mode to your flaps. Your flaps. In my case, I have them on this switch, okay? So then let's also look down here. So flap system is 0, 50, 100, and I ended up with 30 and 40. Okay, so for elevator correction, it's quite a little bit more correction. And you went up to a three second. And I went up to a three second deployment. So you can see our flight that led us to those, um, those settings, but you won't see necessarily this in the video. So what I was gonna say is I wanted to show you guys how to do that if you run into the same situation. First of all, if you need to adjust your trim on your elevator, your mechanical trim, and you wanna get that from 36 to zero, then you set it to zero and that means it'll probably droop a little bit and you take off your wing and you have to adjust the, the servo inside because this type of mechanism doesn't allow for an adjustment, okay? It's really easy, but you do have to get it basically level and true on this surface. Okay, so it's not that hard to do, but you just have to take off two screws, lift the wing up, lay it off to the side, and then make your adjustment with the screw. You loosen the screw and then you can slide the shaft in and out. It's got one of those, it looks just like this guys. And that's what holds onto the wire, just similar to that, okay? Now, if you need to adjust your wing so that your ailerons and your flaps line up, then all you have to do is just lay it upside down and then just be careful because your, your, your wing will bend a little bit when you put it upside down. And then all you have to do is just decouple this like that, these big control horns, and then you can spin them just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna put mine right back and then you just come back here and clip it back onto the control horn and then snap it and you're golden. Mine were off by a very small amount, but what happens is you correct and compensate your ailerons with the flaps um, like this, right? Well, then when they deploy, there's a bigger deviation in deployment than you realize. 
So you really need to pay special attention that these are the same and that your ailerons are the same, okay? Because you see how I have a little bit of a droop here? I want to show you another thing. You see how that's down just a hair? You're going to have to probably, you're going to have to point the camera like this, I'm guessing. Thank you, good job. But you see what I'm talking about right here, how it's down just a hair? Now I'm going to move my ailerons. And you see, if you sit there and screw with it, just make sure you move it back and forth so that it doesn't have a chance to just stick. Sometimes you'll get a sticky servo where it'll be just here, and then after you let go, it'll go just here. And then if you're up, it'll stay here. And so you just gotta watch for that. Sometimes you have to work those servos a little bit when they're brand new. So that being said, our True Maiden will follow at the end of the unbox, build, and radio setup. And that way you can make your, your own decision on whether or not we got that right. Um, but we were up against the wire, and so we said we'll go ahead and grab some more footage for you, and hopefully this thing will do a little bit better this morning, having mechanically centered those servos. So stay tuned. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We got a box. We're gonna open it right now. We've been doing a couple of different planes lately. This is, uh, oh my goodness, what do we have? The Timber X. 1.2. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but Brian, why you already did the Night Timber X. That is true. But this thing's a little bit cheaper, and so people like it because they don't have to pay for the LEDs. If they don't like the LEDs, which to be honest with you, I think the LEDs are awesome. This is a 1.2 meter bind and fly plane. It is a stole high performance plane. It's basically a 3D plane and it's got huge control surfaces. You can do leading edge slats. This is the only time we aren't gonna do leading edge slats, this in the Night Timber X, because the leading edge slats are more of a scale performance adder, in my opinion. So we're gonna get this thing out, we're gonna unbox it. This is available to fly on real flight, and there's some new cool things coming from real flight soon, but I can't talk about it for a little bit longer, and you guys are gonna like it. As with every other timber, I can barely get them out of the box. I don't know why that is with the timbers. It's very strange. If you can grab that, just push down hard and I'll pull the box. We've had that problem with all the timbers, but it's weird. I don't understand why that is. Okay, so Horizon packaging is always good. We have some beautiful weather today. And so we are desperately trying to get this done before the sun sets. And uh, we're hoping to bring you along for the ride. So here we go. All right, so unbox first. Beautiful different trim scheme. We've got that ugly glue in the seam though. Huge control surfaces, embedded pinch hinges, gigantic Metal Gear servos. These are A332 sub-micro Metal Gear analog servos. Ooh, yummy hair, that's always my favorite. Now, just to be clear, there are LEDs on this, but it's not completely embedded through the entire airframe. Okay, so this is a very light wing, but it is very stiff and sturdy, which is awesome, but yet still some for, somewhat forgiving. So they have struck the balance, the perfect balance. All right, so then we got the fuse. Yay, don't have to glue the tail on, which is nice. There is a wood thing in here that holds the fuse lengthwise. And you have to kind of pop, you have to pull that out. That's just packaging. And that is what keeps the plane from sliding back and forth. Since this is a V2, you have the AR631. Previously it had been the AR636B or 636A. Bottom loading battery still, unfortunately, the timber, the Turbo Timber Evo is the only one that's got the top load at the point, at this point. It does have an EC3 connection, and then of course you got the landing gear that allow you to splay out, which is really nice. This plane comes available, you can buy available floats for this plane, which is pretty cool. And a little secret that most of you already probably know is that the longer wing on the 1.5 meter Turbo Timber should be interchangeable on these pockets, which is pretty cool. That being said, the shorter wing allows for a little bit more aerodynamic, not aerodynamic, but acro, aerobatics. Acrobats are what people do. Aerobats, aerobatics are what planes do. Acrobats. 
Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. how that works. I had somebody correct me after many, many moons of saying it wrong. Oh, of course. Which is nice. Yeah. Hey, sometimes, you know, I'd rather be corrected early than like after years of saying it wrong. <laughs> saying it wrong. Okay, so this is a 13.4 prop. Comes fully assembled, except for we're gonna have to disassemble it anyway. So that's always kind of fun. And remember, when you get this plane and you're opening it up, there's stuff on both sides. So pay attention that you get everything out because like that blends in really good. And you want to know what that is? Carbon fiber spar, I'm assuming. Oh, leading edge slats. slats and they are protected right yep. here. These are also a different length than the 1.5 meter. So we'll go ahead and leave those, probably do those for a second thoughts video if we do a second thoughts on this plane. Second thoughts, if you guys haven't been following the channel long on Brian Phillips RC is where we take a plane that's already built, it's already radio set up and we just take it up and fly it again. Uh, sometimes it seems like it's a long time after our initial unbox build radio setup, but then other times like the next day and we just don't publish it for a little bit. Um, sometimes it's months later, just depends on what we're doing. And we do that because we know our environment for reviewing is a little bit different than your environment for flying the planes just for fun. And uh, I know from personal experience that we used to fly a lot and then we would develop lots of different opinions over time. But what we end up bringing to the table is kind of like our first initial thoughts. How does it do as a, in the maiden flight? Okay, so embedded hinges again, kind of got that ugly glue in there, but it makes for a really strong hinge. Everything slides together super easy on this plane. Okay, this is gonna build just like the Night Timber X, except there'll be a couple less wires to land. And landing gear are in here. Okay, they are separate from one another. These tires feel squishier than I remember, which is nice. Give that a squish. Still a little oh, bit firm. Yeah. See, squishy. Maybe not as squishy as I'd like them to be, but the thing is, it's definitely in the realm of where we want it. Mm -hmm. That's, we want the evolution of tires to get softer and softer so they're like a pneumatic tire without carrying the weight of a pneumatic tire. And as you can see, the other wing. So beautiful, huge control surfaces. Get a load of how big those things are. Yeah. They're just massive. So there is a carbon fiber spar in here. And don't forget when you're looking through the box, I almost missed this. Yeah, I was gonna say. There's a wing joiner Should and a couple of little screws there, camera crew, and then look what just came out of here. This is the metal rod mm. or the hollow rod. That's the, that goes in the tail if you wanna make it more 3D crazy. And then this goes in the tail if you wanna make it more of a scale flying, scale performing plane. Now, I shouldn't say scale performing, but more of a regular sport flyer. So it would look a little bit more like a real plane. So I'm sort of torn on how to do that. I feel like the 3D performance will be somewhat enhanced with the steel rod, but it's really not totally necessary. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, I might lean toward just doing the steel rod just so we can see what it looks like because this is the 3D version of the timber. So whereas the night version, you know, I feel like it, it does everything this does, but it just carries a little bit more weight. So maybe it gets away from the performance side of things. So we're gonna pause and come right back. All right, so we're gonna put these landing gear on. They're always fun. Basically you have to line this up. You wanna come probably show them from here, I'm guessing. So you lay them in there like that. And then this thing is gonna get captured right there, correct? No. That gets captured there. My apologies, folks. And they say to use the button head ones, 10 millimeters long, and then they're supposed to be eight millimeter long ones. So these must be the longer ones. These ones are actually supposed to be eight millimeters. And so I think those are truly eight millimeters. Okay, so you just drop them in there. Cam crew got me some screwdrivers. Thank you, cam crew. Mm -hmm. This is just one of the Chinese screwdrivers that comes in one of the planes. Now, if you need to use Loctite, be very sparing because you don't want to get it onto the foam and the plastic because it will eat the foam and the plastic. Not necessarily the foam, but it will eat the plastic and it will weaken all this. So my recommendation is if you have to put something on there, which I've never had a problem with these coming out, I would put either paint on there, like just one little drip of paint or just a little teeny drip of CA. 
and you don't need a lot to get the job done if you're concerned. I'm not concerned, I'm not doing it because it's not necessary in our application in the past. Now, they suggest a 10 millimeter self-tapping button head. So this must be the self-tapping button head. Okay, so that's gonna go into the inside. And the reason I'm guessing that this is 10 millimeters is because it is slightly longer than those ones. And those are machine, okay? So this is gonna go right here, which seems like an ultra long screw for what we're doing with this. That is not biting. So that is not it. See? And if I remember right, we had trouble with that on the last timber. So I'm gonna use the thicker ones now. And honestly, as long as it doesn't go, then that's fine. I just don't want it to go and be wrong. Okay, so these ones are bigger. And the bigger one's gonna drop down in here. Now you could probably use a number two screw. Okay, got it started. So I'm gonna leave that loose. I'm gonna show you the difference here. This is what's not right. Those are in the tail. This is for the landing gear, their machine. This is what's gonna bite here, and then this is what's going into the tail. They're mm -hmm. thinner, okay? Yeah. Then there's some small ones that are used for the float adapters, I believe, but they provide those for you in this step. So then the second landing gear goes right here. Now, you guys have seen us build a lot of the planes that we build. Some of them we spend longer than others. This is kind of a 3D capable plane. I would not get this as a first plane, but you could technically do it as a first plane. I wouldn't recommend it by any stretch because it's gonna to be too touchy for the average new pilot. I would recommend instead that you get the turbo timber if you're trying to be a new pilot. I still feel like that's a pretty capable plane for a new, new pilot if you ask me. There are better choices in my opinion that will get you up in the air with a higher level of success ratios. But that's a big part of what we do on this channel is we try to help people to prevent becoming one and dones. And when we say a one and done is we mean somebody that buys an airplane and gets discouraged because they have a really bad experience with their first plane. And I can tell you this with certainty, it is one of the biggest problems in this industry right now because we have such a short attention span as a society these days. Learning to fly is not easy and it does take time. We drop a bunch of screws, we'll be right back. So basically that's a big part of what we try to accomplish here on this channel, uh, beyond just helping you know what's available, what's the latest and greatest, and then also what are some of our favorites and then what are some of the manufacturers trying to get you to buy. Now that being said, we try to bring them out here and if the manufacturers want you to buy them, then we're gonna review them. Okay, so we're gonna undo this now. Once you undo this, you have to undo it all the way. And then that allows this pocket to be opened, but you end up having to ultimately undo the other side too. You see how that spins out? Then this drops in. And then this one here, I can usually grab it with a fingertip, except my fingernails are short right now, which actually is a strange hygiene related thing. If you're building foamies and you have long fingernails, you may think about cutting your fingernails before you do it because like I just caught that foam with my fingernails and they're trimmed real short. So if you have real long fingernails or if you wear your fingernails long, then you may want to think about being super careful. See, that's why you build the planes, not me. Yeah. Can you give them a different angle so they can actually see what's like from the face here? Okay, so you see how it's flat? And then from above, this closes all the way, okay? So then when you come in and you hit the landing hard, then these things splay out and it works really nice. The springiness uh, is a great feature, but every once in a while people break these springs. If you slam down hard enough, you're gonna break it. If those springs weren't there, you'd break it even faster. Um, the screws that come in this bag, folks, if you're wondering, they go in here, I believe, right there and there. I'm not putting them in. I keep these screws and then I put them into my float kits 
if I have a float kit. Um, okay, so we're on the front of this plane. We're gonna go ahead and put the prop on. Now, for safety reasons, you may not wanna put a prop in at this step, but just we are pretty well versed on this. It's still a little bit dangerous, so just be aware of what you're doing. Okay, so then you undo the nut. Then you take this collet with prop adapter. This part slips in, it's gonna get squished onto the prop shaft. So push it all the way back, then slide this all the way back, then slide the prop on. See that nice tight clearance? Okay, then slide this back, get that most of the way finger tight, and then basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a crescent wrench, you're gonna brace the shaft on the way out and you're gonna tighten it. Generally, this is a pretty easy step and that's why it's not a bad idea to leave the prop off for safety reasons. There's two ways people get hurt in this hobby. That's from getting cut by props and from having issues with LiPo batteries. And when I say LiPo batteries, I mean, generally speaking, they're very safe, but you just need to be careful and respect the fact that they can become unsafe if they are worn out, puffed, extra hot, over discharged, and a variety of other factors. Just be careful. Those are the two main things. Okay. Yeah, not running into each other. That actually doesn't happen very often. I'm sure it has happened, but it's not like a major factor. Okay, so there you go, beautiful fit. All right, flip the plane over. I think we're gonna lay that out of the way for the moment. Now, we have to land some wires. I'm thinking we'll go ahead and get these plugged in right now. Is that all right? Okay. So this is a light controller, so it's gonna say light one and light two. So there are two different controls. So just pay attention to that, it's labeled for you. This is obviously gonna be going to a different type of connector. And then there's ailerons and flaps for each of these wings. Okay, so in order to put this thing together, the easiest way I've found is to put the joiner together, slide the wing halves together, okay? So the wing halves go like this, very simple. Get them pushed all the way in, get everything lined up, and then you can actually hold this wing together with this wing clip, just like that, okay? Then this is gonna get keyed in, but we have to plug these wires in, so this is a crappy step. I don't like this step because it's challenging to get all these different things held at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna lay this here. The camera crew is gonna put a hand on the edge of the wing and then she's just gonna help me hold it up. Okay, so this is L1. So L1 is color for color. So I want brown going up. So you just plug it in like that, very simple. Then I'm gonna go with this, which is aileron. Then you just reach in here until you find aileron L. And why would they know which one's which? So that just happens to be the left aileron though, okay. And then this would be the flap, okay? So then you can go to flap. There's the other aileron. There's one more flap. Now the flap would matter. That says flap L. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into that. If you have the AR631 set up because there's no retracts on this, but there is safe select, there's aileron. So this would be the right aileron. Now, how do I know? Because this is the right wing. I'm just kind of flipping myself over. This is the right aileron. This is a Y cable though, so it doesn't really even matter. As you can see, it's a Y cable that goes down in there, okay? So if it's a Y cable, then it shouldn't matter, but evidently they have them labeled, so I'm just gonna go ahead and respect the labeling for now. Okay, so that's the right flap. So the brown goes down. Now, if you get in a hurry and you plug one of these in wrong, your plane is not gonna fly. So just be careful to double check as you're going. And if you try to plug them in wrong, they'll be very challenging to insert, but you can actually do it. Okay, so this one says L2, this is L2, brown goes up. Okay. All right, so we're all plugged in. Then we have to hit the bind button at some point. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this open for the moment. And uh, we'll just come right back to that when we're ready. So we can leave the wing off. We'll get this elevator and horizontal stabilizer on there. So you can let go now. I believe if you let go, we can just kind of set this on here loose. 
just like that. Okay. Now, if you want the trick of the day, this is the trick of the day. Spin this two or three times, and then that will help to tighten up the cables and keep them in a nice little bundle so that you don't interfere with your servos that are right here, okay? See that? Mm -hmm. So now this is tightened up. And I can also tell where that, that button's gonna be. So I may just reach in with a screwdriver after we're ready for that step. So, elevators and horizontal stabilizers are going on. These things slip in just like as simple as possible, but then we have to put in the joiner rod. Did we say we're gonna do the heavier one? Yeah, I think that's Okay, so the heavier right. one's this one. Leaning towards. Okay, so that just slides through, and you can see there's a spot where it's pretty obvious that that's supposed to go. Slide that through. This is obviously a little bit stronger than the alternative measure. Okay, then these are tied together. You'll note that we didn't install the control arm yet, or the control, that's on purpose. Which way do these go from the top to the bottom? Looks like it. Yeah, okay. So then that just keys it in, and super easy. Now obviously that rudder is gonna have to get turned at some point, so I'm just gonna turn it now. Okay. And then the elevator is going to have to get attached at some point, but we'll attach it after we bind so that we can have that thing level and trimmed out properly. Okay, so the next step is going to be to do radio setup. So we're going to come, well, we got to mark the center of gravity, but we're not quite ready to test. So let's just go ahead and do the radio setup next. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to do this with the NX8. It's been very good to us. So first things first, you're going to click back and cancel or you're gonna click this and then scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF and go to model select. Add new model, change the model type to whatever it is you wanna do. I'm gonna create an acro, that's an acro. Takes a few seconds on this step. Then we're gonna go down to model name and we're gonna type in a name. This is model number 69, look at that. So the model name is gonna be Timber And we'll type it in and come right back. Okay, so we got it to read Timber X V2 1.2 meter. So we'll walk back out of there. Aircraft type is going to become one aileron, one flap. Now, we can look at this. Since this is a bind and fly, it's very simple to set up. They're recommending a four minute fly time, by the way. And 82 to 92 millimeters back from the leading edge. So we'll check that out here shortly. But for now, the computerized transmitter, they're recommending a high and low rates of 170 here and uh, throttle cut to minus 130. I don't know why they're still doing that, but evidently it's a thing still. So it's gonna be one aileron and one flap. And I'm just trying to see if I can see that anywhere. And then of course you can change your picture to whatever you want. In this case, I think there's like a super cub in here, which has a little bit better look for what we're doing. Did I go right past it? Oh, there we go, that's good enough. Okay, and then we're not gonna mess with flight modes or anything. We'll go in straight to throttle cut, highlight that, put it to switch H, which is up here. Then we're gonna test it right here. They're suggesting minus 130. I don't like minus 130. I've run into some problems with that, but I'm gonna set it anyway, just to be on the safe side. When you shut that off, then it goes up to minus 100. So that means it could actually jump on you. So you gotta be careful. We're gonna check that obviously after a bit. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into flap system. Or actually we're gonna go, we're gonna straight into dual rates and expo. I always seem to forget that on 3D planes. So we're gonna have the crazy mode with nothing. Then we're gonna have probably, that's a little bit much. We're probably gonna go like 20 for the middle ground. And then we're gonna go like 40 and drop the rates down to 85, okay? And we're just gonna do that exact same thing on all three, and that's gonna give us the ability to have a quick ready access to get the plane on the ground without causing lots of problems if we don't have enough. Now, that being said, you may like it a different way, and I generally don't do it that way, except on 3D planes. I want a zero expo, whoops. You can also do negative expo, which makes it even more touchy. 
Okay, so 20 and then 40, having dropped the rate down to 85. Okay, so for all three main access, throttle cut's already set up. Timer's gonna set to four minutes by default, or excuse me, by five by default, we're gonna set it to four and activate the one out, which means when you go over 25%, that's set there. It's gonna start counting. At one minute, we want nothing. At 20 seconds, I want nothing. At 10 seconds, I want voice. And at expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Okay, so we should be good to go. So timer's cleared, everything's set. I've got that set to the middle setting and we're gonna set our safe select probably up on switch A. Okay. Flap system. Flap system. We'll set up flap system here. So it's inhibited. I'm gonna set it to switch B. Switch B is also linked to auxiliary two. We may need to unlink that at some point, just so you guys know. So flaps are set to, they're suggesting on the NX8, which is down here, zero, 50, and 100. And 20% down elevator mix for 114 for takeoff flaps with a speed of two seconds for deployment speed. Okay, so we should be good there. And I think I'm gonna go down here and just, we'll go over to monitor. We have gear, we have aux two that's moving, but we don't really care, it's not gonna matter. Okay, so throttle cut is on, flaps and safe. Everything's set where it needs to be set. So let's go ahead and bind. Radio setup's pretty simple on here. We may have to go into forward programming, but we'll establish that here in a minute. So the first thing we need to do to get this thing ready to bind, now that we have the radio profile made, is we need to flip the plane over so that we can load the battery. We have a 2200 4S 50C pack is what they recommend. So we're gonna bind and fly on this particular battery. In my experience with the timber has been not great for loading the battery because it is a bottom loader. The top loader is so much easier. So Horizon, good job with that. We are very, very happy that you chose to do that on the new ones. And so many of us are thinking, can you do that on this one now? Like right now, I'm thinking that. Okay, so we're gonna strap that in there just kind of loose. And remember, this is not bound. Our throttle cuts on and our stick is down, but just be careful. Once you plug that thing in, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it as though I'm going to fly. Now, I'm obviously not flying yet, but the first thing you do is you protect yourself from the prop and make sure that it's not gonna start. It didn't start in this case, but once it gets set in home position, give it a second, make sure it doesn't automatically start. New planes sometimes do. Not this one, but some do. Okay, with inferior electronics. Also, at some point, if you need a plane stand, it works really nice to keep them level when you're doing your setup. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is reach in here and press the bind button. The bind button is on top of the transmitter or the receiver. I'm gonna press it once and then it starts flickering. Okay, now I can lay this down just like that. And then I already have my transmitter on, which is kind of a no-go, so I'm just gonna jump straight into bind. That disconnects our RF and then allows us to bind. We're probably too close, so it failed. So we're gonna go back into bind and bind. bind failed. So go back a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Then we're gonna try binding. Got it. Watch for the dance. Throttle hold is on. Okay, so the binding is done. Now it's auto configuring. The auto configuration has to do with the AS3X and safe. Now I'm gonna control the plane in a safe manner and I'm gonna shut off the throttle cut once. And it didn't start, that's good. Working, throttle cut's on and tested. So we're good to go. Throttle cut is tested and we're safe to go ahead and continue setup. The setup is to put these nylons in which is, oh shoot, we're gonna need that number two Phillips. 
And a number two Phillips is just like your standard size Phillips screwdriver. And then the last thing we have to do is hook up our elevator and we should be ready to rock and roll for flying. And there'll probably be a little bit of trimming that needs to be done. As you can see, the build on this plane is quick. We try not to fly through them, pun intended, <laughs> because we know that you'll have questions, but you gotta remember, this is not really a beginner plane. This would be like a third or fourth plane, so you guys have probably already worked through this. If you decide you wanna put on your leading edge slats, it's very easy, but I wanna show you where that would be done, okay? So we got the wing attached. You would basically peel these things off, but I'm not gonna peel them. And there's a socket, and then you stick them in with glue. It's very simple, okay? So now, looking back here with me, camera crew, this is the elevator, okay? So you see how there's an elevator rod right there? See how it moves in and out? Now watch this. Am I in safe or am I not in safe? How do not you know? Not in safe. Good, and we've already given throttles, so it should be AS3X, but mm -hmm. I don't even think we went to 25%. So because we're not in safe, we're okay to do this, okay? We want this to be level, and then where does it say to put that in? Did, it, did you see that? I did not see. It says to put it in the outside hole, okay? Well, it shows it in the outside hole, but then there's a diagram later on. Elevator goes to the outside hole. Okay, so on the inside, it's on the outside of the control arm too. This pops up like this, and then you can slide it off, and then this goes right into that bottom hole, okay, just like that. Then you slip this thing back through like that, and then you snap it back and you're done. You're like, but Brian, how do I adjust if my elevator's level? You do it from inside on the servo itself. Okay. Oh, really? Yep, so it's a bit of a pain. So we're gonna mechanically trim it after our first flight if necessary. Okay, so let's mark the center of gravity quick. Center of gravity is gonna be defined at, in this case 82 to 98. So I'm using the world's crappiest here again. 82 millimeters. I'm just gonna hold my... Now they show it from the leading edge of the wing, not this little recess, okay? So I'm gonna make a little bump for 82. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. There's 82. And then the other hole is gonna be at 98. That's a long range, folks. Look how wide this range is. Okay, so there's that. And you'll note that I'm using the inside points and the outside points should be the same. Okay, then you've got your marks and you've got your mark. Then we can check the CG. Now remember, we are flying a little bit tail heavy because of that heavier rod in the back. Okay. Oh yeah, I think we're gonna be golden. I think we're gonna be good actually. We're a little bit nose heavy there, we're tail heavy on the back. So without further ado guys, if you wanna help support our channel, the easiest way to do it is to of course, watch the videos, like and subscribe. But then the next best thing you can do is buy the planes from the links in the video description below. Small commission gets generated for us that's you're not paying. And then we can fund our channel with that little bit of resource um, over the course of thousands and thousands of purchases. It really does add up and it helps us to fund our channel. So we really appreciate you doing that. Stay tuned, we have so much more. We're obviously gonna be flying at the beginning of the video. Are you setting up safe? Yes, safe. Safe is a very good feature, auto leveling the plane. So what we're gonna do is we are going to click, scroll down to forward programming, connecting, gyro settings, save select. You have to assign a channel. In this case, I'm gonna assign gear. And I want gear. See how it says mode three, mode two, mode three, mode two. So I want it in mode three, I want safe on. And in mode two, I want safe, or excuse me, I want AS3X on on both. And you have to turn on safe select. There's mode one, cool. So safe is currently on and safe is currently off. But AS3X is on in both setting. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk out of the menu and I'm gonna flip 
my, I'm gonna reverse my gear. Okay, so now safe is on, and you can tell by doing this, elevator, safe is on, safe is not. Safe is on, safe is not. Take off flaps, landing flaps, sweet. All right, guys, you come here for the best walkthroughs, hopefully on YouTube that you've seen since the last one. And uh, we really do appreciate you buying from the links below. It does help us a lot. So hopefully this video helped you out. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and we will do our best to answer. Stay tuned, so much more coming. Best audience in YouTube history. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got the Timber X. Awesome plane, Horizon Hobby. We're getting ready to fly this thing right now. Just got done doing a hurry up and set it up. Throttle cuts off. Look at this. That thing turns sharp. <laughs> Take off flaps, landing flaps, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Safe is off. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Out of the flaps. We definitely have We definitely have some trimming to do. So take off flaps, I'm gonna do a bunch of down trim. Full landing flaps here. Almost acting like that. The trim is wrong. So the last time I flew a Timber X would have been actually not a Timber X at all. It would have been, look at that guys. It would have been the night timber. See that roll? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if that's just a trim issue or if that's just something else. We put the metal rod in the tail so it would fly a little bit more like a 3D plane and it's definitely more porpoisey and we didn't do any mechanical trim on the elevator mostly because you never know exactly where it's gonna line up. Full landing flaps, here we go. Boom, look at that. That was pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty rough landing. I think that it's like we have our, our correction for the elevator backward. Holy cow, that's crazy roll rates. Hit cornholes better than most planes. It's super, super floaty. Gotta love it. And then safe. That's safe, guys. Okay, so we'll show you the limited bank angle. There's your roll, there's your roll. There's your down, not much down, lots of up. Okay, out of safe. Just an AS3X now. There we go. I'm finally starting to feel like it's li it's lining up properly. Okay, let's try landing it here. Nice. Gotta love those landing gear, guys. Those things splay out nicely. I wanna try this real quick, though, because I feel like the uh, flaps are correcting the wrong direction. I'm gonna actually just take the correction out. This is the test, guys. Okay, takeoff flaps are off. Take off flaps on. Uh, okay, I guess it's not the wrong direction. It's just got a ton of flap correction that's needed. Oh yeah, <laughs> the correction's going the right way. It just needs more than they recommended. Mm. This thing is just like almost basically a 3D plane, but it happens to come with a bunch of lights, which is cool. Safe. That is so cool. Guys, you gotta love having that backup plan just in case you screw up. Full landing flaps here, we'll land it right at our feet, hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my flap correction back up, except I'm gonna go even more. I think they said 20, I'm gonna go like 32, 33, 32, and then I'm gonna do like 15. Let's do, no, let's just do 20. Okay, okay so take off flaps, better. Full landing flaps, still not getting the nose to point down, but it is kind of strange. It feels like it's got quite the roll tendency. I wanna look at those flaps as I go by. 
I think it's just the torque roll, but look at that. So there is a trick, guys. You can set up a flight mode. Oh, I'm in safe. Sorry, folks. So that was our four minute timer, incidentally. That is just so nuts. This plane will do anything you tell it to. Okay, let's do a flat spin here. Okay, you can do it, you can do it, and then safe. That is so cool. All right, let's try making it look scale here. I'm gonna go into my high expo. Take off flaps. Look at those lights, just enough to take the edge off of that dark backdrop. And full landing flaps. Okay, so the next step is I'm gonna go and turn this up to more like 30, and I'm gonna turn this up to like 40. That is a ton. And you know what? I'm gonna set my deployment speed. Instead of two, I'm gonna do three, okay? That does help when you have a huge deployment on flaps. Okay, so take off flaps. Oh yeah. You guys see how it's leaning to the left? Okay, full landing flaps. Oh yeah. I actually overshot the target now. Okay, out of the flaps all together. Now this is a 50 C 4S 2200. Sometimes when you get a plane that likes to roll on you and you've got your trims, otherwise let's just show them a little bouncy roll, rolly poly there on the mains. You can actually set up a flight mode that will correct your aileron roll when you have the flaps deployed. So you can set your trims consistent with different settings, okay? So what I'm noticing is that I see a little bit of trim here, but once I get off the ground, the plane wants to roll. It's almost like it's responding to torque roll, but I don't think it is. And so I was thinking maybe it had something to do with the deployment asymmetry, meaning that this flap is going down more than that. So I'm just gonna look at that really quick and see if that's a problem. It sure doesn't really look like it is. Mm -mm. You see, it looks like they're pretty even. So it might just be torque roll. So I'm gonna hook back on. We're two minutes 27 over. This is the version two. It comes with the AR631, but that does not mean that you've got uh, pack voltage, unfortunately. Okay, so full landing flaps are deployed. Stole takeoff is like right away. You know, I feel like we have it a lot more flat, but if I do any more, it's gonna really undermine our ability to fly this thing properly. See that weird flat turn? Mm -hmm. That was me doing that, by the way. Boy, the lighting is getting bad out here, and yet I can still see this plane great. Take off flaps now, folks. I'm back into my 20% expo, 100% rates now. Full landing flaps coming in. I wanna see if I can just slip it in here. I just love it. It just does no wrong, folks. Look at that. Dragging the tail wheel and still flying. Look at this. The shorter wing definitely makes for a strange behaving plane compared to your big 1.5 meter timber. And I remember that when I did the Night Timber X, I said, you know, this plane flies a whole lot different. It's so much looser on the ailerons. And by the way, that's with no flaps. Look how much faster that is, 50% throttle there. Okay, upside down flight performance is okay. See the roll? See that? I don't like that at all. I think it's just a, uh, it's almost like it stalls over the one wing because of the prop wash. Take off flaps. Lenny flaps. You just get it on the ground. So the other thing I wanna check is that the elevator's going up even, and it sure looks like it is. So, all right, let's step off to the side here. So now the other thing too is this is the Timber X, but that does not come with an Avian ESC. 
If you have an Avian ESC in here, you can set up thrust reverse because the AR631 will support that. But you do need another channel, so keep that in mind depending on what transmitter you're using. Man, that wind is cold coming off of that thing. Full landing flaps now. So as you can see, you can just boat around with the thing still. But it's not the same as flying you know, your regular Timber 1.5, you actually have to fly it a little bit more. But I mean, guys, look at this. It's all about confidence. I mean, we're in a tight area here, folks. Real tight. So just to give you an idea of how big that area is, that's probably about 100 feet of clearance from here to where we're stopping. And we're only probably in a 20 foot box. That's a pretty tight area to fly, folks. It's not a dinky plane. It's not huge either. But just to let you know, you can definitely do it. Oh, and by the way, what are we at? Like nine minutes of flight time now? We're about 5.59. Of course, some of that we were down for. But just look, look at this. Look how sweet that thing is. And I said it earlier, and I'll say it again, this is not a beginner plane because it's just a little bit too intense. I feel like you're gonna really get scared off by a plane like this when really if it was your third plane, your fourth plane, you could do it no problem. It's not a hard plane to fly, it just gets around really quick. And if you're trying to fly this for a beginner plane, just set your Expo up high. You know, go to pretty much 40%, kick your rates down to 75 You'll be fine. Fly it with safe. You can fly this thing all day. It'll be no problem. But the thing is, it's just, I'd rather see you get the turbo timber. I think you're gonna be happier if you're talking about a timber. If you want that stole performance and that beauty of this plane and this model and the way it looks, the lights, then just get the, get the 1.5. You're gonna be happier anyway. The slower roll rate will make it so much less scary to fly. Just look how smooth that is. Okay, so watch this. Okay, I know some of you are thinking, I wanna see it go up on its mains and just walk around like we're walking the dog, okay? There you go. Takeoff flaps are deployed, by the way. Out of the flaps all together. Hammerhead coming. 50% throttle. Full landing flaps, a little bit of throttle to get over the control surfaces. And what are we at? Uh, seven minutes and a half, seven minutes 40 over our four. So I would say as per typical, if you're using smart packs, Horizon has really gotten ultra conservative on their time estimates. I don't know why. That's so cool. You guys can definitely see what's going on. Just, it's a perfect example of why we need lights on every plane right there. Full landing flaps there. And as per usual, if it weren't already obvious, when we fly a true maiden, that's a true maiden means tonight is the first time that it's flown. There are some adjustments, so we apologize. We'd like to try to mitigate some of that to the uh, unbox build and radio setup. Look at that, you would not be able to fly that plane in that position if there were not LEDs on it right now. You know why? Because that thing would be invisible unless you're superhuman. I have reasonably good vision, not great, but not horrible either. Used to be horrible. I love it. I love that you can just jank it down on the ground like that. No problem. Those squishy tires do everything you need. Just love it. Love it. That was a rudder turn mostly. A little aileron to level the wings. Just treating it like a three channel right now. Just doing a little bit of coordinated turns now. Little elevator, little aileron. Keeping that thing nice and low to the ground for extra visibility. Going into the bowl here, we do have about a three to five mile an hour wind. I would say it's maybe even slightly lighter than that. Pretty laminar. It's going toward the plane right now. We're flying straight into the wind right over the camera crew here. Beautiful pass. 
taller grass here and look at that no problem at all hear that dead stick landing folks okay you good where you are mm -hmm. all right i'll go ahead and come to you you'll note that it's a dead stick landing it's such such a dead stick landing i went all the way around the yard with it okay out of the throttle right in the elevator and there she is just as rough as it gets we cannot end we will not end i will dead stick land this thing before i leave that my landing okay you good mm -hmm. okay there we go that's, that's good fire. so there you have it folks throttle cuts on flaps are going back up i feel like this timber x is probably the least refined of all the all the timbers that we've flown the reason I say that is because you really have to tweak the trims to make this thing fly level and true and to get the elevator to not porpoise. Now, is that a big problem? Not really. Plus, we did put in the metal rod on the elevator. If you put your carbon fiber rod in there, you're going to tend to have a more stable plane, and that's because it's designed to do that. 3D flying calls for a little bit more tail weight, basically a more tail heavy plane. Uh, it's also going to make your elevator more pitchy and your plane in general more pitchy. The other thing too is, if you sit here and look at this, I feel like my flaps are not exactly even. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time and try to get those evened up. I should have done that before, but we were trying to beat the uh, mother nature tonight. So I think you may not experience that. Now I wanna show you just how big of a disparity we had on flap configuration compared to what the manual suggested. By the way, look at that, 11 minutes. So let's call it 10 plus four, 15 minutes of flight time is not bad on a 2200 but we were at 30 and 40. That is a humongous difference, plus a three second deployment. It really helped to tame down um, the ballooning. So I would highly recommend it. And I do not like a plane that balloons. I don't care if it's a stole plane. I wanna do it with the elevator myself. So that being said, if you're wanting that snappier response than this already produces, then what you can do is you can walk into this mixing menu and you can go in here and go elevator to flap and you can turn that on and you can attach it to, you actually don't wanna set that. That's just on and off. So you'll put it to on and then you'll set your percentages there, okay? But it's somehow, I don't know why it's not letting us put the values in. There we go, so curve one. And then watch what happens. So it's like 76%, watch this. See what happens? Okay, now let's just, I know the battery's dead, but we'll figure it out. So check this out, okay? Watch how insane this is. 50% throttle, look how porpoisey that is. That's how you can really get nuts with your 3D controls, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna land and we'll just put it back at our feet before I get back into it. It's gonna be super porpoisey and that's okay because that's what we're doing. See how that moves together with the elevator? I've always thought that was a weird thing to do. One application where that worked really sharp was on the F1680. We had experimented with this and it was helpful because I felt like the elevator was a little bit insufficient when you got into the low speed landings. I wanted to be able to pull that thing, pull that nose up. Okay, so I'm gonna clear that because I do not like that function. And then I'm gonna just turn it to inhibit and then it's done. But if you guys want that, in terms of 3D performance, it's you know the flip of a switch essentially. And you could also set it so that it's only on when you're in ordinary mode, you know, like no flap deployment. And then when you go to take off flaps or landing flaps, because you're taking off or landing, then it would it would cease to do that. Um, or you could set it to a totally different switch altogether. Uh, the throttle cuts on and tested. This plane is great. Uh, it's everything that you expect from a timber, but more in that it's more crazy. Now, what does it not have? Here's what it doesn't have. It doesn't have a top load battery. It doesn't have 1.5 meter wings. It does have leading edge slats that can be installed as an optional uh, choice. I wouldn't recommend it on a 3D plane because it's gonna interfere with some of your upside down performance and things like this. You can absolutely fly with them on there just fine all day long. You have tons of power to overwhelm any of those symptoms. But the thing is, you're gonna get a more clean flight without them and that's what I want from the Timber X. I don't want necessarily a scale looking performance. Um, do I like the X as much as I like the 1.5? No, I like the turbo timber better, but I like the non-turbo two-bladed configuration of the original timber better than the turbo timber. 
Why? Just because it's a preference issue. I've had both and I like the slightly shorter, I like the stubbier nose. It's a preference issue. But I don't like the bottom load and I always feel like it's hard to get the battery in here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then also, when you do get ready to put your batteries in there, if you get a long battery, like a 3200, you can fit in there, but just barely, just, just barely. Um, it, you can actually carve some foam and get a bigger battery, but you're gonna have a hard time securing it then. So just keep that in mind and getting your CG, because look where you are, you're up in the nose. You can only go back so far. Okay, splaying landing gear went together super easy, had no problems. The squishy landing gear really helped to make my landings that are terrible look better than they should. And also, of course, the gigantic flaps, gigantic ailerons, gigantic elevator, and gigantic rudder, along with safe, good limited bank angles. The down angle is not a lot on this. It's one of those planes where you're gonna struggle to push it down, okay? So you may have to come out of safe, bring it closer to the ground, and then go ahead and turn it back on. The other thing is when you have full flaps on and you're in safe, this plane, safe does not stop a stall. So don't expect it to stop a stall. The reason I tell you that is because many times people think safe is gonna keep the wings level. That is true if you have enough airspeed. When you get into a plane like this, you can induce certain effects where you're gonna be going like this and you'll block all the air from getting over your controls. And then it's gonna do what? Heavy side down, which means nose down. What's good about that is that this plane is heavy and when you want a plane to start flying, what do you do? You put the nose down so you can start getting air to go over the wings, okay? So it's not all bad, but just keep in mind, even in safe, the elevator is going to fight you out of that. It's gonna try to level the aircraft. So just, what I can implore you as a new pilot, if you try to fly the Timber X, which I would not recommend, just get the Timber, uh, get the Turbo Timber 1.5. If you must have a Timber for your first plane, you'll be much happier with it and it's not a big difference in price. Um, I also think it's got the top load. The Timber Evo is gonna be just, it gives you a couple other bells and whistles that you don't get on this. Um, and by the way, you don't need all of them. Like thrust reverse, you don't need on this plane, but if you're gonna be flying off of floats, might be worth looking at an Avian ESC so you can add that feature down the road. Um, also, the lights are great. But what I was getting at is, <clears throat> I feel like this plane is a great plane for somebody that likes the Night Timber X, but just never really expects to use the Night feature. If you're buying this, because you like the way that that flew and you want the 3D experience for about 50 bucks more, you can have a very exciting night experience too. And so my encouragement is, as with always, as with the Night Timber X, which is why we didn't review this a year and a half ago, if you want the night experience and you're willing to pay a couple extra bucks, do it, it's very cool. But if you know for sure you're not gonna do it, this saves you a few dollars and a little bit of weight. So that being said, Timber Axe, buy it from the links in the video description below. We obviously got a beautiful sunset for you. Uh, it's the last day of November, 2021. And uh, we are looking forward to a couple of nice days. It's very weird in December, mm -hmm. which is tomorrow, December. It's gonna be like 60. What the heck? That's awesome in central Iowa. NX-8 has been wonderful. Radio setup was super easy on this plane. We go through it in a snap. Also, you need forward programming to turn safe on. I believe you can bind it to turn safe select on and then make your assignment. But if you don't turn it on with the bind plug, then you have to press the button, do the conventional bind. Just read through that part in the manual if you don't have access to forward programming, okay? Because we're showing how to do it through forward programming. It's very easy. And we still have to flip the switch because we want our gear to operate opposite of what this thing thinks you want it to. Okay, AR-631 is not a huge change, in my opinion, compared to the 636B from the V1, but it is a change. So if you're asking me what's different about this and the V1, the only thing that's different is that this has the AR-631 versus the AR-636B or 636A in the earliest ones. I don't even think any of the Timber X's had the 636A. But that being said, when and if you crash this and you want to salvage a receiver, the 631 is way better to salvage than the AR-636B because you had to hook it up to a computer and default it and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Whereas with this, it's quite a bit easier to get in and actually use that for another application should you not be replacing it into another Timber X. So without further ado, the sun has set. I'm freezing. The camera crew is also freezing. We appreciate you guys. World's best audience on YouTube. Stay tuned for the unbox build and radio setup. And if you're thinking about buying one of these for yourself, 
definitely help us out. Buy it from the links in the video description below. Then somebody else will pay a small commission to us, which keeps our channel on the air, producing tons and tons of content. And also, we really appreciate you letting your friends know about the channel. We're trying to continue to grow, and we have had um, the very good fortune of a lot of natural, what not natural, they call it organic, organic growth, growth. Yep. on YouTube. And we are very, very happy uh, that you guys have supported us in such a great way. And also to our patrons, a special thanks. If you want to become a patron, look in the video description below right at the top. We have PayPal for those of you that don't like monthly support or prefer to get more dollars to us directly without less fees because pay Patreon has pretty high fees, really, if you get right down to it. But that being said, we just really appreciate you guys that care enough to support us in that way. It's, 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 um, it's humbling. But anyway, guys, that's all we got. Thank you. Stay tuned. More coming.